Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for this webinar. I hope you're all keeping well in these crazy times. But whilst this world has been at a standstill, we've been very busy actively uh, helping and assisting clients who are looking and considering alternative residency and citizenship. My name is Ryan Darmanin, and I am the Managing Director for Latitude based out of Malta. And with me today, I'm uh, glad to be joined by our partners in Germany uh, from Brokehaus and Kollegen, uh, Klaus and uh, Eleni. Um, uh, welcome and thank you for being with us today. So, um, so with us, I have uh, Klaus and, and Eleni. And before I'll, uh, I'll do the introduction, I just wanted to say a few words um, uh, about Latitude um, um, and, and, and what we do. Uh, we are predominantly um, uh, focused on residency and citizenship. And what that means is we help uh, clients all over, all over the, the globe, um, providing them peace of mind. You know, the 21st century insurance policy, which is the freedom of mobility, the freedom of access, security and all that the solutions that we provide actually actually bring. Today we'll be covering uh, the programs for Malta and Germany. I'll be covering the, the programs for Malta and Brokers and Kollegen um, will be um, uh, covering the, the, German, the German solution. So um, uh, Klaus, a um, uh, pleasure to have you with us. And maybe I'll ask you to um, uh, share with our audience today um, a few words um, and, and, and make the introduction as well for, for Eleni. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and thank you very much to Ryan to hand the word over to me. So, my name is Klaus Brockhaus. I'm the managing director of Brockhaus and Colleagues. We are a law firm uh, with the main focus on international clients investing and migrate to Germany. So I'm very happy to uh, join this uh, webinar today together with my colleague here in the Cologne office, Ellen Itzima, who will guide you through our main information about the blue card, which is one of the main options to, to come to Germany as a high qualified people um, in this uh, interesting world and interesting time, which we are going through at the moment. Um, so Brockhaus and colleague um, is um, advertising global citizens on a local market in Germany and uh, that's what we are standing for. We have a wide network here in Germany uh, and um, yeah, this is our target to, to help you um, through the jungle of migration and investment um, to help all of you to, to come to Germany and find a new challenge of life here in the western part of Europe. Uh, so um, thanks to Eleni to, to um, go through with the clients today the, the uh, main aspects of the blue cards uh, because I'm unfortunately blocked in a meeting today with the local district commissioner of uh, one of the cities where we are dealing with the projects and uh, we are just pre-discussing one of the next investment opportunities for, for you as potential new clients. So um, yeah, I'm happy to, to meet you in individual meetings, maybe here in, in Cologne or wherever in the world I can catch you up and um, yeah, let's see what we can build together. So enjoy the webinar and hope to see you soon. Thank you, Ryan and Klaus for the introduction. Greetings everyone from Germany. I hope everyone is feeling great despite the pandemic, which is still going on. My name is Eleni Zima. I'm a lawyer for Brokos und Kollegen, and today I will be uh, going with you through the blue card option. But first thing, I'm going to pass uh, back to Ryan for the introduction of the Malta project, and we will see. Uh, we will, um, I will see you again in 20 minutes. So thank you so much, uh, Klaus and 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 Eleni. Um, today we have a maximum of 45 minutes covering uh, three programs. I'll be covering the two programs in, in Malta before I'll hand it over to our partners um, uh, in Germany to cover Germany. Um, a little bit um, uh, further on, on, on Latitude and Rift Trust. Um, uh, we are an international firm headquartered in Jersey with, with 12 um, uh, offices and representations around the globe. We have two main um, uh, areas of focus. 
one which I already mentioned, which is the private client um, uh, consultancy. Um, on the other hand, a very important role and a very important hat that we have is the government advisory, whereby you'll hear uh, me discuss the Walter programs uh, where Latitude had an active role in the um, implementation and uh, promotion of the programs when they launched. And furthermore, you'll hear from our partners in Germany how we're working together with um, uh, the authorities and, and the municipality in promoting Germany uh, as well. Latitude also holds together with um, uh, Rift Trust, um, one of the few actually um, international firms that is um, uh, approved with, from, by the government uh, holding the international um, uh, marketing agents licenses for the programs that we, that we offer. Um, without further ado, I'd like to um, uh, jump straight on to um, sharing with you um, uh, the two programs in Malta, starting off with um, a brief introduction on Malta. Unlike Germany, uh, where it needs no introduction, I feel that I'll, um, uh, for the benefit of our audience uh, joining us uh, today, I'd like to share uh, a little bit about Malta, um, uh, which is a tiny dot in the heart of the Mediterranean. Um, uh, it's a European country um, uh, uh, with, with 7,000 years of history. So um, uh, we actually have three standing um, temples which predate um, uh, the, the pyramids in, in, in Egypt. 200 years of, of British presence, hence why um, English is an official language uh, alongside Maltese. Um, it also makes it also makes uh, doing business in Malta um, uh, easy, as the you know the legal side of things, the documentation are all um, uh, are all done and available in, in English. Population of just under five hundred thousand, um, uh, but then in contrast, in contrast, over two million tourists visiting um, uh, our little island on a on a yearly basis. That's uh, pre pre COVID, we'll see how things turn out um, uh, once the world starts to open up again, um, and a, and a very strong legal legal system um, uh, that we're we're very proud uh, to have here here in Malta. M Malta joined the, the EU in 2004, uh, and in 2007 became a Schengen member, and a year after adopted the uh, the euro currency. We, we have a democratic uh, government and um, uh, we say what we lack in size, we actually make up in the economy and the credit ratings and, and the pro-business uh, government um, that we have uh, together with you know, the tax incentives, the tax regime that we have that attracts a lot of the big players, a lot of the international firms that we have um, here in, um, in Malta. Uh, in, in, in the gaming industry and, and the fintech um, uh, and a number of international firms that choose to open um, um, offices, representation and subsidiary offices here, here in Malta. Um, uh, as I said, you know, being in the heart of the Mediterranean, uh, very well connected. Um, it's a nearly three hour flight um, uh, to London uh, with um, um, very, very good, good connections. A strong real estate market, um, again, predominantly driven by the local demand, uh, but also um, the foreign. As I said, we've got over 2 million tourists visiting on a yearly basis. There isn't enough hotels where to host all the travelers, and therefore the buy to let for the local uh, market but also the demand for the short letting, the Airbnb um, and what have you, uh, continues to, to create a very buoyant and lucrative real estate, real estate market. Uh, pristine weather, I mean, over 300 days of sunshine um, uh, per year. So we're quite spoiled on, on that front for anyone looking to make Malta um, a base. Uh, but for those who um, are not particularly looking to you know, quickly leave um, from uh, the country that they come from, but still looking to have access into Malta and, and, and Europe, as you'll see me discuss 
with the programs, um, uh, it's uh, good knowing that um, uh, it's a safe and secure environment, very, very low uh, crime rate and, uh, and excellent work-life harmony. You know, it's still, it's still um, um, uh, light uh, 8.30, quarter to nine and, uh, in, in the evening. And I'll let you know that um, uh, we have a strong education system. Over 100,000 students that actually visit um, uh, our islands to um, uh, take English as, as a second language. And uh, I know 100,000 in the greater scheme of things. Um, but per GDP, that's like um, uh, nearly one fourth of um, uh, our, um, uh, our population in terms of students coming to Malta. It goes to say, um, uh, we have a strong education, um, English uh, language centers, but also a very, very reputable um, uh, health sector. And nowadays, this is actually becoming quite a requirement for the clients that we, that we assist. So um, uh, now I'll be taking you through uh, the first Malta program, the Malta Residency and Visa program, better referred to as the MRVP, which was introduced in 2015. And then um, with the, the, the feedback that we, we've actually provided to, to the authorities and, and to the agency, um, came some changes that made it even, even more um, uh, uh, interesting and hence why today you have a very, very popular program um, which is sought by a lot of um, uh, South Africans. We assist a lot of South African and Arabs who um, invest in such a solution uh, because not just the access that it gives, because of the benefits as well, which we will go through, I intend to go through uh, as, we, as we go along. Um, um, starting off by um, uh, explaining who qualifies and then what the obligations are. So very straightforward, who qualifies? This is open for um, third country nationals, therefore non-EU and EEA that are looking to take up residency in, um, in Malta. And they must be, the main applicant must be at least 18 years, 18 years of age. And that is what is required together with um, um, showing proof and a declaration that the main applicant either holds 500,000 in capital, that could be assets, it could be a real estate uh, valuation, it could be a business valuation. So as you can see, it's very, very um, um, quite flexible requirements. Or if they haven't got half a million in assets, um, a declaration that they do earn 100,000 per annum, uh, which is earned outside of Malta. That is what deems the individual um, uh, uh, fine to, to, to apply together with uh, most of the programs re requires is that important there's no criminal criminal background. The, the four requirements or the four obligations I should say that one um, must satisfy once they are approved um, is that they uh, must hold a qualifying property and so that being a, a rented property or a purchased property. Uh, most of our clients opt for a rented property because that's actually one of the flexibility this program offers compared to other residency whereby it's mandatory to purchase property. Uh, but the, second, the second obligation upon approval is to make an investment of 250,000 in government bonds or listed securities. But we'll talk about that um, um, in the slides to come as to uh, how the uh, MRVA or the government agency, I should say, <coughs> excuse me, um, uh, allows for financial mechanisms to um, uh, to finance basically financing companies to finance that investment to bring down the capital outlay, making this program um, uh, one of the most price competitive from from a capital outlay perspective in terms of uh, residency by investment. Um, the, the third requirement is a contribution to the government for, for the amount of 30,000, which covers all the family. And once again, that comes upon approval. So only 5,500 of that is required to initiate and submit an application. Um, an applicant together with all the dependents being included in the, in the application must hold uh, health insurance and um, uh, 
and obviously they would be going through um, a due diligence uh, process that um, starts off with the license agents uh, ourselves and also then the background checks carried out by by the government uh, agency. This is my um, um, most uh, interesting slides from what I have to share with you today. Why is because I'm, I'm a firm believer in uh, being a consultant on, on um, global residency and citizenship. Malta and the residency program um, offers um, uh, a number of unique selling points, a number of benefits that are not found in, in, in many other um, programs, such as the fact that an application can be initiated, prepared, and in many cases where there are representations, diplomatic representations for Malta, also submitted without even having to visit Malta. And you know, the only time you are required to visit Malta is uh, once you are approved and then you're invited to come over to take the biometrics and receive the um, uh, the residency permit together with um, uh, the the residency card. Um, uh, another, another interesting benefit is the fact that the program grants permanent residency, therefore upon approval. So this is not a temporary residence, and then you have to do the time to graduate onto permanent residency. You will receive an indefinite permit, a certificate, um, which is equivalent to the permanent residency. And on top of that, there's no, mi no minimum physical presence uh, required. So uh, the best way to explain is this is as passive as an investment that, it, um, uh, that there is uh, in terms of attaining residency, getting all the benefits and access, but without having to you know, tick the box of having to spend X amount of days in, 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 in the um, country of, of, of residence. In this case, there's no requirements whatsoever. Pri uh, competitively priced in under 190,000, you know, are you probably saying, how is that possible? I mean, one of the, one of the obligations was 250,000. How is that possible? Well, there's a financial mechanism, as I said, which in the slide, um, uh, in the next slides, we, we will be able to share. No language requirements, of course, access to the Schengen country um, uh, and able to live um, uh, as much and uh, spend as much time in Malta as they like. And it also allows generations of families. We deal with, with South Africans, we deal with, with, with Arabs, they, they come to us with large families. And the moment we say, no, the price, the contribution does not increase because you have four or five um, kids. The 30,000 covers the whole family. And the only time uh, it's a benefit, the main applicant and the spouse can include their parents and grandparents. And that's the only time that increases by 5,000 for the additional um, uh, dependents, such as grandparents or, 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 or parents. But 30,000 covers the whole family. And another interesting fact is it allows for generations of families. Not only can one include the parents and the grandparents, but also um, may have kids um, uh, later on down, um, down the line and can be included. So the flexibility of this program, the fact that there's no requirement to also purchase property. You could rent a property for uh, a minimum um, 10,000 per annum that would be um, satisfying the, the, the requirement. So that's, um, in a nutshell, the um, unique selling points and the benefits. I would now take you through um, uh, the uh, financing mechanism and how is this program um, achieved um, uh, in under 190,000. So the 250 investment can be financed through a financing um, um, company um, whereby they would be financing um, and bridging the gap uh, from 70 to 250, uh, therefore the 180,000. You might ask, um, uh, why, why, why is this so? Well, one, this brings down the total capital outlay from around 360 to 190,000. And two, uh, not over 95% of our clients opt for financing um, the investment because they've got better things to do with 180,000.
um, rather than having them there in the government bonds, earning them next to nothing. So um, there's two main benefits to why most of our clients opt for that. And the way it would work out is we actually present it as 125,000 to attain um, permanent residency in Malta. How is that? That's 70,000 for financing the uh, investment, which is after approval and not prior to. The contribution of 30,000, which again, only 5,500 is paid uh, upon submission. And our fees, um, 25,000 that covers um, the immigration, the application, and the whole process of even hosting you in Malta at the time of um, uh, approval. So all of that is 125. The only thing you need to add, um, apart from having health insurance, which we can even support you with if you don't have, um, but it's trivial in terms of the amount that it would cost, which is around 2,000 for the whole family, um, is a property of your choice. The minimum is 10,000 uh, per annum. Um, some of our clients that intend to spend a bit more time here in Malta opt for um, a property, let's say around 12 to 15,000 per annum. But ones that do not really intend to make much use of it or their time in Malta, um, whether uh, extended or short, would be spent in more luxurious apartments or in hotels, then they just choose to satisfy the minimum requirement, which is, which is 10,000. But anyhow, a property of 10,000 per annum over five years, which is the whole period, is 50,000 together with the security deposit and the insurance, um, throw in another 55,000, and that's where you are um, all in. This would not cost you more than 190,000. Um, quickly to take you through the, the process, there's a four stage um, process. Stage one is compiling the application, which can all be done remotely from the comfort of your own um, homes. The second stage is the submission. Um, so we check, you know, making sure it's complete and correct. We will submit to the agency as licensed agents, whereby we'll go through a thorough check of the application. Um, the third stage is once the applicant would receive what is called the approval in principle, and that is subject to, uh, you're approved, subject to fulfilling the four obligations that I've discussed there for the property rental, the, um, uh, the investment, whereby um, um, we would, especially if it's financed, it's very, very straightforward. One would uh, receive a contract note and that's submitted together with the health insurance um, uh, and paying the, the contribution, the remainder, 24,500. At that stage, one would receive what is called the final approval in principle, and there's an invitation to come over for the biometrics and the um, uh, residency certificate, and three to four weeks after that, the card would be, would be issued. So, all in all, that's um, uh, the program, the Malta Residency and Visa program. Um, uh, it's, it's, as I said, um, a very straightforward program. You know, we work with a number of agents, with a number of partners that also help us um, um, reach you, um, uh, our, our clients, our prospect clients. But please feel free to reach out. Um, uh, we can hold a private one-to-one -one consultation if you'd like to and uh, discuss this further and get access to this very, very um, uh, interesting uh, proposition. Thank you for um, your time. And what I'll do now is I'll be um, um, explaining the going through the citizenship program. So I will now take you through the Malta Individual and Investor Program, also referred to as the Citizenship by Investment Program, whereby um, uh, our key executives actually had um, um, a role in um, advising the government and also implementing um, uh, the legal notice promoting this, this, this program. I'd like to start off by um, actually making a disclaimer whereby this program had a cap of 1,800 applicants and it is now reaching its cap. In fact, it has. What the government um, has done is actually, one, is committed to renew uh, the program uh, under new regulations, but in the meantime, allowed and made an announcement for a last call of applications with a deadline 
for the 31st of July. So anyone in this audience who are keen on um, attaining citizenship um, in Malta, which is actually um, citizenship in, 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 in the EU, um, I urge you to contact me by not later than um, early next week because slots are filling in very quickly and um, uh, I'm actually quite confident to say uh, if we don't uh, slot you in by next week, you will not be able to um, apply under this, this program. Uh, designed to attract um, uh, high net worth and uh, talent individuals um, to Malta, so apart from the foreign direct investment, looking um, uh, to make those business connections, and um, we've seen a number of applicants actually establishing um, uh, setups in, in Malta. One of the um, uh, only, I should say, uh, citizenship by investment program that has been recognized by the European Commission. Um, uh, and the reason for that, of course, is that applicants will go, will be going through a um, uh, through a, through a due diligence process that, that, that guarantees a reputable a reputable applicant uh, is acquiring um, citizenship. In terms of um, uh, the uh, what what qualifies to apply is um, uh, one must be of age, so eighteen um, uh, and over and um, holds no criminal uh, background. In terms of the, the benefits, um, some of these benefits, of course, um, but the ones I'd like to highlight is the fact that you know, citizenship is for life and passed on to generations without needing to renew any permits. Um, as they say, it's, it's, it's literally a 21st century insurance policy in terms of having you know, um, not just a plan B, but having the right of establishment in anywhere in the, in the EU. So the moment you attain citizenship in Malta, you've got the passporting rights in anywhere in the EU. You've got the right to work, the right to live, the right to um, uh, settle anywhere in the EU and set up businesses anywhere um, uh, in, in, in the EU. With access as well to um, uh, our uh, health um, education um, uh, in Malta, which would be free being a citizen of, um, of Malta. And uh, I, I have to also highlight the fact that from what's available out there as a citizenship by investment is definitely uh, the most price competitive um, uh, program out there. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, for a single applicant, it would be just under a million. But uh, uh, an applicant that intends on um, uh, including the family and, and, and kids is just over a million, but in comparison to what's available out there, the next one up would be Cyprus, whereby um, the investment, the capital outlay requirement is north of uh, 2.5 million. Um, uh, and then the next one up would be Austria, where um, you're looking at around 3 million in, 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 in donation or, or, or 10 million if it's an investment, if it's an investment vehicle. So uh, again, the, the, the citizenship by investment program in Malta is definitely one of the most um, uh, the most price competitive um, uh, programs. The obligations, or, um, uh, or I should say, what one must satisfy upon being approved. Um, in this case, the residency has four. The district has five. There's a contribution of six hundred and fifty thousand to the national development fund. Uh, a fund whereby Malta has um, been utilizing for social housing, um, uh, for um, uh, redoing um, all the road works in Malta, for helping certain charities. So it's a national development fund. One must again either um, acquire property or rent property. So there's the flexibility as well. Um, one needs to also complete. 12 months of residency, which is part of the actual journey before um, making it to um, uh, the end where one is naturalized and receives um, uh, the, the citizenship. One must have 12 months residency, but that doesn't mean one must physically be 12 months in Malta. And it's, it's all about creating genuine links and that's what we specialize and, and, and support you with holding um, an insurance uh, policy for the main applicant, the family, and the fifth, 
being um, 150,000 investment in government bonds or social or um, listed security. In this case, this cannot be this cannot be um, uh, financed. As I said, apart from the um, uh, the contribution for a single applicant is 650, um, uh, one that looking to include the spouse and the dependents, um, there's additional contributions there that one must add, hence why it goes over the million. And apart from that, that the due diligence fees that are paid on to the government to carry out what is called BVRs or background verification, background verification checks. The journey is based on three phases, residency, um, and that's where I explain that in this case, anyone that wants to um, uh, secure a slot under these regulations, as we don't know when the new program would be launched and what um, the requirements or changes that that would um, come with, um, uh, requires, requires a visit to Malta, take biometrics and activate the residency um, um, uh, stage, moving on to the next stage, which is the citizenship stage, whereby we compile the citizenship application. It's a comprehensive application that one must um, uh, put together. And upon submission, the government takes between three to maximum six months in um, uh, reviewing um, uh, carrying out their checks, internal and external with due diligence firms. And at that stage, an applicant would receive an approval in principle. Um, to share with you a recent uh, family that we had um, uh, from um, South Africa, they have actually were approved in just under seven months from the time of submitting the, the, the residency. So it only took us a month really to put together um, uh, the residency and then upon submission, the government took just over five months to um, approve the, the application. And that's where the third stage comes in, which is the passport stage. So and that's when one would fulfill the obligations of the contribution, the property, um, um, uh, the, the, the health insurance, um, etc. And uh, there's an invitation to come over for the oath um, uh, ceremony and the naturalization takes place at, at that stage. So that's um, the program in a nutshell. I would um, invite you, uh, anyone that's interested, to get in touch um, early next week, as early next week, to uh, hold a private consultation. Should you be interested, um, uh, and uh, would be happy to to assist you. I now um, uh, would be handing over to uh, my colleague in um, in Germany, who will uh, be taking you through a very very interesting preposition. Um, accessing the, the economic powerhouse of uh, Europe. Thank you so much, and um, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure being here with you today. Thank you. So, hello everyone again. Uh, this is Eleni from Rogos und Kollegen. Um, our law firm and I personally are very glad to be here today. I will address the topic of residency through employment and to be more specific through the Blue Card EU. Um, which is the foundation of our program. Now, as you may know, there is no an official investment immigration program in Germany. So there is no such a thing like a residency based on an investment uh, program on a federal basis. Um, since we're talking about employment in, uh, immigration or um, employment immigration, I would like to start by pointing out that what I will be presenting today is the foundation, the legal framework of the Blue Card, which is the basis of our projects. We do not expect from our clients and from our agents to find a job themselves. So we have a whole package structure that, among others, facilitates our clients um, the, the whole employment route. So that's just to, to be clear. I will try not to bother you with too many technical details because at the end of the day, it is our job to provide this for you. It's part of our responsibility. But I think that it's very important that you understand the foundation and how it works, where it is to find. Um, so that's the reason for the whole uh, introductory information. Now, Germany does not need any further introductions. Um, it is still a great magnet for people from all around the world who wish to have an access to it, or they wish to relocate and build their new lives here. 
The reasons I think are very well known. I think the, the most important one is the economic growth and stability. Um, even during this COVID-19 situation, Germany has proven its leading role at crisis management. According to the estimation of the European Com Committee, um, uh, Commission, uh, there will be a fall of Germany's GTB for the year 2020 um, of about 6%, whereas other European countries are expected to experience a fall of about 10% or more. So once again, Germany proves its uh, or preserves its reputation as one of the strongest economies in the world. Apart from that, other reasons are the political stability, a very trustworthy environment for investors, so for doing investment from all around the world, a very highly equipped health sector, and of course, a very high quality of life. So residents and citizens of Germany feel very secure. They know that the state will not only respect their rights, but also protect them actively. And this is for many of our clients very important, given mainly due to, in some countries around the world, really um, non-favorable living conditions. Um, South Africa is a very, the most significant partner of Germany in Africa. Um, there are many federal German states who have very uh, close contacts and partnerships with provinces in South Africa, and they're carrying out their individual projects which have to do with development and economic basis. So it's not only important on a political level, but also an economic level. Um, as Klaus already said, our company, our law firm, is uh, a law firm under German law. We're seated in Cologne. And we are specialized, among others, in residence permits, in residence um, law. We have a very broad network of business partners who are assisting actively our clients in all matters that are, are combined with it, like insurance matters or job recruitment or locating a proper real estate or um, investing in business, investing in real estate, um, and et cetera. So, um, we can provide a whole package for our clients and apart from that we have a great communication also with the authorities not only the local ones so the ones that are in germany but also the foreign missions so the german consulates and uh, um, the german consulates are all around the world um our experience from 2019 showed us that the vast majority of our clients were applicants of a blue card, and this is actually no wonder for us. The blue card is by far the fastest way to PR, to permanent residency, and the fastest way to get a residency in the first place since it can be done in under two months. Um, as I said before, um, we will now do the, the general overview, the foundation of Blue Card, and we provide the whole, the whole facility, the whole structure for our clients and our agents, uh, so we facilitate the employment route as well. So let's take first of all a glance at the most important or the general um, facts about Blue Card. What is a Blue Card anyway? The Blue Card is based on EU directive initiated to in the year 2012. And it aims to attract highly qualified professionals or so academics from non-EU countries towards EU countries. There is a, a, re a regulation in Germany under German Residence Act, it's section 18b, subsection 2. Um, before March, this section was called 19a. I have checked two days ago uh, because the German state uh, also provides you an English version of the German Residence Act online. But as far as I know, I checked two days ago, they haven't adjusted the number. So if you Google it, you have to go for section 19A. But the contemporary, the updated section is 18B. It's based on a new immigration act. Another very important thing up front for everyone who is interested to 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 the to blue card is that it also enables family reunification. So the spouse of the main applicant and um, minor children until 18 can also come uh, with the main applicant and the spouse is also allowed to be employed. Um, so and since numbers speak better than words, let's take a look to the next statistic. As you can see, 84.5% of the blue cards that were issued in Europe for the year 2017 belong to Germany. It's, just, it's a huge number. The next country is France with only 4.3%. Um, you can see how seriously this matter is taken in Germany. Um, 
we have tried to find some contemporary, some updated um, numbers on it because these are for year 2017. There were not uh, any in Eurostat, um, but it's safe to say that it moves in the, in the same direction. As I said, the EU directive started 2012. In 2013, Germany had already issued 11,000 blue cards. And in 2018, it, it, it had issued 27,000 blue cards, mainly for, for people that had never been to any EU country before. So the numbers are very impressive. Why is the blue card so favorable? What makes it so special? First of all, freedom of movement within the union. So the blue card is not only an employment residence title, it's also a ticket to the Schengen, Schengen uh, common place. So any holder of blue card can stay in any other EU uh, state for a maximum of three months within a six month period. So we understand that this is one of the most, uh, uh, the most important facts for all our clients around the world. The second advantage is for me as a lawyer, actually by far the most significant one. One, um, it's the legal security that the blue card provides to its holder. So holders of a blue card are entitled by law to receive a permanent residence permit if the legal requirements are met. Now I know that this sentence sounds very logical, so I want to highlight why I put it on, why it's so important. Normally, uh, for each case, for each resident in Germany uh, who is a holder of a blue card, there is a foreigner's authority who is responsible for. This foreigner's authority has no discretional power to decide upon the case if the legal requirements are met. In other cases, for example, in um, self-employment or employment which is not blue card, the authority still has discretional power. So the authority can say, Okay, dear applicant, I know you fulfill the legal requirements, but I'm not convinced yet, so I will give you an extension and I will not give you a PR. So to me, this is the most important because the first question we get from our clients is not when can I move, but it's when can I get a permanent residency? And it, it provides the highest amount of legal security. They just have to go for the requirements. We will uh, come back to that later. They're not so difficult to meet. And if they do, the authority is obligated to issue them a blue, a permanent residency. This entitlement covers also the issuance of the blue card in the first place, the visa that is connected to, with the issuance of a blue card, and it also covers the spouse. So the spouse also is entitled by law, which is not the same a case in other residency uh, permits um, cases. Um, also, this is it's it's the the quickest way as I thought, but I will highlight uh, I will I will highlight that later. Moving on to no German language skills. Um, well, Germany has not always been very open to to qualified people or to people who do not speak the German language. This is not the case anymore. This is why this is one of the most important facts for a client. Officially, the law does not demand that the applicant speak German. Um, only some uh, groups of professions are accepted by that people that need additional admission to exercise the profession, for example, doctors. But the general rule is there is no German language skills required. Moving on to the fourth advantage, no priority examination involved. That was a huge hiccup, hiccup in the past. So every time in the past and on in every time that a non-EU applicant was applying for a a residence title in Germany, an employment residence title, the authority had to check whether there was another EU applicant who has the same credentials. And if so, then they had to, they were obligated by law to prefer the EU applicant. So you can imagine how unfavorable that was for non-EU uh, residents who had stood no chance to really move. This priority examination is no longer the case. So this is a huge burden out of the shoulders of our clients. Last but not least, accelerated procedure. So Germany is still trying every time to really move that forward and to really uh, implement everything possible for the whole thing to, to work smoothly. There is a new um, immigration act starting from the 1st of March, 2020, and it prescribes among others, an accelerated procedure also for blue card holders. So just to give you an, over, an overview, before the whole procedure from the application of the visa until someone can come here. It could last up to 18 months, which was extremely discouraging, not only for the applicant in his country or their country, but also for the employer who were waiting in Germany. And it just was not uh, practical for nobody. 
So these are the five basic advantages. Let's go through the requirements. First of all, we need general requirements uh, like everywhere we need someone who is a holder of a valid passport, someone who is full of age and someone who has clean criminal record. Then we need a recognized degree. So not all degrees are uh, high school or sorry, sorry, university degrees I meant are recognized by the German state. So even within the same university, not all degrees are recognized. We can make a preliminary assessment of that so we can check for ourselves. So you shouldn't worry about it. We can, we can tell you upfront if you have any chances or not. Then we need a working contract. It doesn't have to be signed, but it has to be a working offer. So what's critical here is that we have an employment who demonstrates its willingness to hire that exact applicant. Now, as I said before, this is part of our package. So we are, this is our responsibility to bring, to bring you in contact with the employer. The working contract must offer appropriate position. So it has to be corresponded to one's credentials and qualifications. You can have um, a doctor who is willing to, I don't know, work like, uh, like a pharmacist, but a doctor cannot work as a nurse. And then we need a minimum salary. So the blue card, um, the blue card or the law increases the minimum salary for blue card holders every year. For the year 2020, this amount is about 55,000 euros annually gross. And there's, there's a specific category of professions from the field of uh, uh, mathematics, information technology, science, and human medicine that they need about 43,000 euros annually gross because there is a higher shortage of these um, for these professions. Um, apart from these, there are some general requirements. One has, ha has to have a health insurance, but this is not a problem because a working contract also covers a public health insurance. And one has to have an official uh, residential address, but this applies for anyone who's, who's, who stays in Germany. If all requirements are met, the blue card is issued automatically for four years if the working contract is indefinite, which is actually normally the case in Germany. If not, then the blue card is for the duration of the working contract plus three months. The new accelerated procedure, I don't want to go into Technicalities, I just wanted to show you why, why it is accelerated in the first place. As you can see, the authorities involved, like the certification authority, the federal labor, but also the um, consulates abroad, have now strict deadlines to uh, work on the case. So that's why the whole procedure now um, can be done in two or three months before it could last up to 18 months, which was extremely unfair. And going back to one of the greatest advantages of Blue Card, the fastest way by far to permanent residency for Blue Card holders in Germany. So one has to still have the employment contract. We need German language skills of an intermediate level, so B1. And if these are met, then one can apply for a permanent residency after 21 months. That's by far the fastest the fastest possible option for residence um, permit holders in Germany. If they don't get it, because I understand, understand the German language can be a little tricky, um, they can still apply after 33 months if they have A1 German language skills, which is actually the, the absolute basic language skill level that one can achieve. Both of these A1 and B1 are according to the European Common uh, Framework of Reference for Languages. So these are the things that one has to concentrate to, to acquire, and then they get permanent, per, res, permanent residence permit with no discretional power from the authority, as I said before. So um, this was in, in introductory information. As I said before, that's the foundation for our projects. Uh, it's, it's, it's good to see a little bit of the overview and how it works. And uh, we just take care of the whole thing. We, we offer a whole package to our clients. I hope it was helpful. So um, I will see you in a while under the Q&A section. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Eleni, for that uh, interesting uh, presentation and, uh, and information shared on, on, on Germany. Um, I do vouch that um, uh, it is um, a very interesting preposition and one that's keeping us also very, very busy. So now I want to once again thank uh, everyone um, that has joined us today and um, uh, we 
will open up the Q and A. I can already see a number of a number of questions um, uh, coming up. So um, what I'd like to do is to set expectation is we'll try to go through as many questions as we can. If we do not manage to um, answer your question, um, please feel free to get in touch uh, with us. You see our contact details um, made available and um, we're happy to um, take this also on a one-to-one on -one -one private consultation. Thank you very much and um, uh, I'll open up to the Q&A. Okay, I need to know all about uh, the process um, of attaining residency in Germany. So what I would suggest here, Eleni, is rather than go through the whole presentation again, um, to this particular uh, individual who is asking us this question, we'll invite um, to have a private one-to-one -one consultation where I'm pretty sure you'll be able to go through the process. Absolutely. I'm more than happy to join as well. Absolutely. Um, Another question, uh, okay, I want to uh, understand more about the Malta citizenship program. Again, uh, I would invite to hold a private consultation. So you have my contact details, please get in touch and we can set that up um, uh, and, and discuss in more detail. Okay, next question, how much initially we have to spend to buy the property in Malta. So it depends on the citizenship, the minimum is 350,000. On the residency, the minimum is 270,000. But both programs provide utmost flexibility insofar as you do not have to purchase initially, uh, well, you don't have to purchase at all. You could definitely rent throughout the whole um, uh, five year requirement, or you could decide to rent and then once you decide to make Malta more of um, a base or you're using it more frequently, then you can decide to invest in the property. Another question on Germany, same, similar to what we had earlier. Um, am I able to, uh, with, with the right education credentials, Eleni, am I able to uh, qualify to get residency in Germany? I think you've, you've, you've answered this question already. The answer, the answer is yes. Maybe what's good to add at this stage uh, is that it actually starts, the very, the very first process, Eleni, starts with uh, making sure that the education, the credentials, the diploma, the degree exactly. that they have actually is recognized uh, by the authorities in Germany, correct? Exactly. So to answer the question from Mr. Patel, exactly on what you're talking, on what stage do you determine if an applicant meets highly qualified professional criteria? If we see your degree, we can do it in one hour. So we could we do it at the beginning of the procedure. Otherwise, we cannot move on anyway. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Eleni. Um, this question is about all the three programs we discussed today. Um, uh, it's regarding to, uh, the will I be able to access the Schengen countries with um, uh, Germany and the Malta programs? The answer is very straightforward. Yes, they're all part of the Schengen zone. So residency in Malta or in Germany gives you, gives you the access. Maybe what's also good to mention, both on Germany and on Malta, uh, Eleni, uh, is the fact that apart from having access to the Schengen, both countries, Germany, um, the program that Eleni shared with you and Malta does not imply any restrictions on the number of days that one must spend in the country. Actually, it's very, very flexible. In Malta, there's no uh, minimum days to spend to retain the, the residency. And in Germany, actually, you put it down to at least once a year, am I correct? There is, there is a restriction, but Germany takes in, into consideration that business and working uh, environments are international nowadays. So holders of a blue card and their families can stay abroad for maximum 12 months a year. So it's, you know, it's, a, it's a huge slot. Fantastic, fantastic. We do have here another question, Eleni, which I would invite on a private consultation. Um, uh, I think it's by Janish. If I can, sorry if I'm not pronouncing the name correctly, would like more information about the blue card and the breakdown of um, uh, the cost and the payment stages. So I think that's again another one to hold in a private, in a private consultation. Another question: We are an immigration consultancy based out of India. Are you willing to collaborate? 
I think I can answer that one. <laughs> the answer is yes, and you will not be the first one that we're collaborating with. This is the beauty of the setup that we have, which enables mm -hmm. us to work um, with, with uh, private clients, but we're also making this uh, proposition available, uh, all the propositions available to immigration agents that obviously satisfy a certain level of um, um, uh, criteria and due diligence that we must carry. But the answer is yes, we are mm -hmm. able to uh, collaborate to enable um, this product onto your, uh, onto your clients and prospects. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, my name. Okay, da, 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 da. can you arrange employment? Okay, we have answered that questions already. Similar question. Uh, I think if you answered this question as well, there are similar questions which I am not, um, uh, which I'm not basically. Okay, someone is asking us to reach out to them, so we'll have that and we will do. Uh, okay, they would like an understanding of the payment stages. Okay, so. Here's another question, Eleni. I am an HR professional. Uh, am I able to attain the blue card? Um, I, so HR not, means human resources, right? You, yes, I'm a human resources professional. Uh, will I be able, I'm, I'm guessing, I'm, I'm elaborating a little bit further. I'm guessing they're meant to say, will I be able with my education credentials mm -hmm. get the blue card? I think the, the, you know, we the can check that for you. It depends on your degree. So we check on your degree and you, we can tell you in one hour if you are a candidate for a blue card. Fantastic. And okay. answering the same question to Jason, what are the professional occupations that would be eligible? There's no restriction. There was before, but right now there is no restriction. And what is the minimum level of education? You have to have a bachelor. So it's really for academics. Fantastic. Thank you for that, uh, Eleni. Actually, that really clarifies because it's good to say that we have a huge demand for attaining residency in Germany and really what we do is you know want to give the answers straight straight away to our prospect uh, applicants absolutely. we start off with the with the education credentials because that's where you'd know I would say with the education credentials and making sure that they have you know the capital outlay required to attain to attain this residency I think it's, it's also important to to mention that um, in either case, whether they're setting up their own practice um, or whether they would use the structures that BNK has set up in Germany to provide them with the, with the employment um, uh, contract, this program is not a program whereby you do it to earn a salary, but you're actually doing it because you have um, the, the capital to enable to um, uh, uh, to, to enable applicants to attain residency by satisfying the criteria and also being able to make the necessary um, uh, the, the necessary requirement, including the, the, the capital is required, right? Exactly, very well put. Okay, so um, we may be able to give a good number of references for Blue Card for Germany. Okay, what are the fees for the client? I think I'll also invite them to have a one-to-one -one consultation where we can break that down for them. Okay, can you? Okay, can you give us an idea? You've read that. Okay, uh, right. So there's one for Malta now. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's been all about Germany. So <laughs> the MRVP program involves investing two hundred and fifty thousand for a period of five years in government bonds which can then be sold after five years and they get the money back. What about the financing options? Is any money put under the financing options returned? Okay, this question by Bulat, um, the straightforward answer is no, you have two options. You either purchase the government bonds, hold them for five years, and then you have the option to sell them. And maybe in, in, in the interim, you make uh, interest on that investment, albeit very, very, very low or you choose to finance um, the, the purchase through a financing company, through a you know, bridge financing company, um, whereby the 70,000 is, is a one-time payment, but it's not returned at the end of the five-year period. Think of it as 
the cost of financing um, uh, the, you know, the, the difference of, of uh, 180,000. 180, you have both options. Many clients choose uh, to finance it because they've got better things to do with 180,000 and they can earn much more than the actual cost, which would work out to around 5.6%. Um, if I've got Malta citizenship, how long do I need to rent a property for? Can I sell the property if I've bought, uh, if I've bought it? So the answer is yes, total flexibility. So you can be renting and then decide to purchase. You can purchase and then decide to sell during the five years. Um, uh, you just need to make sure that you either have a rental or a purchase throughout the five year period. That's the most important thing. There's another question here. Can I uh, purchase a property and then, sell, uh, and then rent it out? The answer is no. And to be able to benefit from the property market from a buy to let perspective, we have clients that choose to uh, either buy more than one and then choose to rent the second property or they rent the minimum requirement they then make an investment after, let's say, uh, they've been approved a year or so, then they would rent out that investment because they're satisfying the requirement with the rental property, with the first rental property. So I would like a separate consultation for Germany. Again, we'll invite everyone to get in touch with us to set, to set this up. Uh, I'm interested to know more about the financing. Again, I think it's best that I'll do that over uh, a private consultation. So um, uh, there's, a, there's a point here that a poll has been um, uh, launched. You will be able to see that uh, any attendees can take uh, and submit their answers to the poll. Here's a question for you, Eleni. How can I become a citizen in Germany after I actually um, uh, access uh, and attain residency through the blue card? So the requirements for citizenship are that you have to be in Germany for a total of eight years. You have to, of course, speak the German language at a very good level. Uh, you have to give away your non-EU citizenships. Uh, of course, you have to still uh, prove that you can cover your livelihood without any uh, help from the state. And you have to sit for an exam just to make sure that you understand the whole way that uh, the German state is working. So there is no um, there is no um, exemptions. It's the no normal law. It's eight years minimum only for people who are um, who can prove that they're really very well integrated, like, like if they study in a German university or they're employed by a German uh, um, employer and they speak German in their everyday life, they can be, it can be seven years. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Eleni. Here's one for Malta. Will the MRVP program give the right to work without any additional requirements? The answer is no, uh, because the question was without any additional requirement. There are additional requirements which would be to apply for a work permit. So what the residency by investment would facilitate in this stage is the opportunity to be in Malta um, when you, let's say you're looking for um, uh, employment. However, uh, it's not very common that someone applies for the residency by investment to then find a job in Malta. I think we're looking at a different, at a different criteria. They can, of course, work, let's say, in setting up their own company, for example, but I'm yet to come across one applicant for a MRVP, and we've had many, that choose to make an investment of 190,000 to then look for um, uh, a job in Malta. That said, um, uh, there's no restrictions, but one would need, would need um, uh, a work permit. Okay, um, okay, we've answered this question. We've answered this question. I think we're catching up now with all the questions <laughs> that we've been answered. Uh, we've been asked. Okay, we've answered this. Yeah, we've answered this as well. Okay. I think I'm uh, glad to say that. You know, we've managed to uh, keep up with all the questions that's come in. Um, Eleni, if um, uh, I have uh, failed to answer any questions, missed any questions, I apologize. 
but I do um, uh, invite everyone to get in touch. Um, it's, it's, it's a free, no obligation consultation whereby um, uh, literally in, in, in 20 minutes, half an hour, we'll be able to go through the process. You'll understand clearly you know, what, what the stages are, what the costs are, and um, what the opportunities what the opportunities are there forward and uh, make a decision there and then whether this is the right solution for you or if not, we're happy to discuss other tailored solutions um, uh, for you. Uh, another two questions popped up. Let me just make sure that they haven't been answered or they're similar to the ones we've had. Yes, there is one about the education, which I think- We covered think, that? We, did we cover that? Can you give us an idea of the profession, occupations as we've covered that? There is no restriction, exactly. We no need at least a bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a question here. What is the minimum level of education that an applicant should preferably have to uh, to, to, to qualify. Now I know there's two, uh, there's, the, there's the basic and there's the intermediate, but can you elaborate a little no, bit? No, it, it has that? to be a bachelor's degree from a higher education. No, sorry, sorry, apology. Uh, they're referring to, um, uh, apology. PR? Uh, yeah, I'm re they're referring to the, to, to graduate uh, from the blue card onto the permanent residency, they need the, oh, language uh, skills. Language. Exactly, exactly. Yes. So you need the A1, which is the absolute basic. You just have to be able to say, hello, my name is Eleni and I so work the, there. We call it the taxi language, right? You'll be able to <laughs> communicate with a taxi driver. Yeah. Very well put. And you get it after 73 months. And if you're a little quicker in learning uh, German, you can apply after 21 months with the B1 level. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, and obviously the opportunity there, Eleni, is if, if, they, if they don't want to put in the commitment of getting to an intermediate level, then what that means is instead of, instead of graduating by law to permanent residency uh, just before the second year, um, then they'll have to, they'll have to they will graduate uh, on the 33rd month, right? That's the exactly. way. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so in both cases, they get to permanent residency in Germany in under three years, which exactly. again, it's, it's the quickest route to, to, to permanent residency, unless it's issued um, directly upon approval, like, like in Malta. But there isn't many other options out there that you get mm -hmm. permanent residency in, in the EU. Okay. Exactly. Uh, right. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, I think we've covered all the questions. Eleni, thank you for being with us and uh, please do extend um, uh, my regards to, to Klaus. Um, uh, thank you very I'd much. Like to, I'd like to thank everybody who has joined us today. I know there's a lot of interest on, on, on both Malta and Germany. Um, uh, I'd like to leave you with this. We're here to support you um, making um, uh, really one of the most important decisions in your life and we're here to support you and handhold you throughout the process. It's been a pleasure being um, uh, here and joining you. Thank you for your time and really looking forward to um, uh, discussing further these solutions for you and um, uh, the future of your families. Thank you. Exactly, from our and, side um, also, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, bye-bye.